A couple of things I wanted to talk to you before we launch into this, and hopefully my resolution will figure this out, itself out. Um, if you ever are asked the question by a client, should I disclose X? Yes. What is your answer? Always, always, always recommend disclosure. Right. If it ever came back that you were like, oh no, that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Your license could be potentially in jeopardy. You could have a Georgia Real Estate Commission um, violation. You definitely have some concerns. So uh, somebody asked me that the other day and I was, I, I just need to reinforce that at every single opportunity. If you are ever asked, should I disclose anything? The answer is always going to be yes, you should disclose. I may or may not be able to get through this today. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about today is just a couple of reminders. You may or may not need this, but it's always good and you never know where everybody is at. But what I wanted to talk about today is how to read the closing disclosure, the Alta or and or the HUD. OK, um, all of those terms are used for the most part interchangeably. Um, if you're if you're old school, like some of us in the room, um, it, the general terminology is the HUD, um, which is it, with the acronym standing for the house uh, housing and urban development form um, that used to be the form that everything and everybody used. Um, then when RESPA took place, um, that required a different form because it had everybody's information on one form. Um, and then uh, Greg added some uh, clause to the purchase and sale agreement that allowed us to use the ALTA, uh, which is the American Land and Title Association form. Um, and if my screen would work, it would be up there, um, but it is not. American Land and Title Association. Yep. Okay, which looks like that. All right. Um, so basically what this document does is it has all of the seller's information on the left side, all of the buyer's information on the right side. I got to get this fixed. I got to figure out why. Works perfectly over here. It just doesn't show up over there. Um, your main role when you get this Alta, when you get this document, you hopefully are asking for it the day before, the day of the closing, so that you can review it. Yes, ma'am. I tried on both sides. So in, in real estate classes, they said like you have to receive it three days before closing, or else closing gets pushed back. Is that not really the case? Okay, so that is a federal law requirement, not that you get it, that your client gets it, reviews it. And in most cases, it is a preliminary closing disclosure, okay? And most of the time, the one that they are getting and reviewing is the one that comes from the bank, which is, uh, which is truly called a CD, a closing disclosure, okay? And, and, it could be, and there's one for seller, and there's one for buyer and you do not see both sides of that particular document. So you're absolutely right, there is a federal requirement, but it's not that, that you necessarily see it, um, but it's what the lender sends to your client, okay? So a good rule of thumb is you wanna to talk to your client and say, okay, yeah, that's the one that you saw, however, and you've agreed to it, and you've signed off on it and acknowledged it, which allows us to go to the closing, but there can be some slight variations. There can be some things that change um, between that and the final disclosure at the closing table. So that's why you would always want to advise your client, be prepared for maybe a few hundred dollars difference. Um, you know, if they are wiring funds and you're, and you're concerned about whether they've got enough or anything like that, wire funds above and beyond what the, clo what the closing disclosure um, says and you'll get a check back at the closing if, it, if it's not needed, but then you've kind of got it in your hip pocket and you can use it if you need to, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, There's language that 
that says that, right? That there can be changes after the three. Yeah. But if, if the lender doesn't have it when they're on time, then it's, that's when it gets. Yeah, so the, the elements that are in the preliminary that's coming from the lender have to deal with the, the interest rate, the purchase and, you know, the, the, the P&I payment, uh, the principal and interest payment, um, you know, and uh, general closing disclosure or general closing cost elements. What may not be included in that disclosure could be things like HOA prorations, um, a water bill that had to be paid in order to take care of the final closing, things like that, that may be in there, which is why there can be slight variations. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen one that's more than a thousand dollars difference from the preliminary to the final. Um, but I don't know that, I mean, I, I suppose it's possible that it could be different, but generally it's not. Okay. Y'all, I have to apologize. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to post these just so you guys got some, some examples. Um, but the things that you want to verify on the closing disclosure, um, whether it be the Alta, the closing disclosure, the HUD, whichever the case may be, is, is the sales price correct? Is your commission correct? Okay, that's pretty key, don't you think? We all want to get paid. That's your payday. So you got to make sure that the commission is correct on there. If you have, uh, if you are representing the buyer and you have uh, stipulated in one of the special steps that the buyer, uh, that the seller is going to provide a home warranty, you want to look on the seller side of the equation and you want to see that $630 or $590, whatever the case may be. You want to see that line item on there. If not, then you need to get on the horn with the closing attorney or and or our uh, help desk to make sure that that um, that warranty has been provided to the attorney. OK, any questions on that? The key um, is what's at the bottom and I wish I could show you um, what's at the bottom is um, is the uh, the amount due to your seller, or if you're on the buyer side of the equation, the amount that the buyer needs to be able to close, okay? The funds needed to close. Um, those are the key elements that we are looking for. I've got them all highlighted on here. It's nice and pretty, but I, it's not, it's useful, useless at this point. Um, so, and you want to have that conversation with them is this is the final number. This is what needs to be wired to the closing attorney in order to close. How long does it take to wire? Like, is it immediate? Um, usually within a couple of hours. Um, but most banks have a wire cut off at two to three o'clock in the afternoon, um, depending upon where they're coming from. Um, so, you know, good rule of thumb, have it there the day before. Make sure you've got it there the day before the closing. Yep. Have it wired before closing. Yep. Uh, I actually had a situation last week uh, where the money was coming from a bank account in Jordan, and it was in Jor Jordanian dinar dinari, I think is is yeah. their name of their currency. And we had to very, you know, the closing attorney was very specific about, and this is one of the reasons why you want to use Moreno is because they know this stuff. They were like, it's got to be converted to dollars before it is wired out of that account into ours because something about international law, when it comes in, if it's, it's converted here as opposed to over there, there's duties and taxes and things like that on it. Um, so yeah, and, and that particular wire, Literally, they called me a couple hours before the closing and said his funds to close went from $400 additional above and beyond what he was what he had already wired to $3,900. And he doesn't have that here. He's got to get it from from Jordan. Um, ironically enough, the wire was there within a couple hours. So we closed on time and funded on time. OK. Um, OK. So you've got the Alta has both buyers and sellers information on it. The closing disclosure probably only has one or the other. Um, and then there is a document called the HUD. 
Does everybody understand? The, there is an actual HUD document. You probably haven't seen it unless you've closed with a cash buyer. Okay. Any cash transactions do not use Alta. They do not use the lender um, closing disclosure format. They only use the actual HUD document, which is the housing and urban development. And that's because it is a cash transaction. Um, got a great sample to show you. Can't do it. <laughs> It, it basically, it looks very similar and, and it's formatted very similar. Um, and if you've, if you've sat at a closing table, even, even the closing disclosure and the Alta look very similar and, and a closing attorney will basically say words to the effect of these look and, and formatted slightly different, but the end result is the numbers are all exactly the same. And that's something that you should look at and verify. Okay, here's the closing disclosure. The funds needed to close was 141,000, yeah. and the Alta also says 141,000. But um, what about like land? Do they have to? Do they really have to come to the closing if it's just land? What do you mean? Do they have to come to the closing? I mean, like if it's just a wire transfer, well, I guess they have to sign documents, right? Yep. Same thing. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and typically you're, you're going to get the closing disclosure or the HUD or the Alta, whichever before then. Um, and a lot of times the closing attorneys will send it to you, but will not send it to your client. Yes. Then you can be either the bearer of good news or the bearer of bad news by calling your client up and going, okay, these are what the final numbers look like. Here's where we're at. Um, and you know, it, Confirm the wire went through and it's in, in X amount. Um, those are all very good things to do. Um, ironically, you, you do need to understand the stuff that's on there, even though it's a line item that doesn't really pertain to you, because the, your client is going to ask you those questions. And if you, you can look at it and go, okay, yeah, that credit for prorations of taxes, you see $2,000 credit on your side. But you see over here, it's a debit on the on the seller side because he's paying you for his portion of the year. You know, those are those are things that you need to be able to understand conceptually to be able to talk to your client about them. Nope. Manuela was first. Yep. Um, in my case, it was a HUD disclosure form. And who was responsible for paying it? Well, so it turns out the seller had to pay it because they marked it as a no initiation mm -hmm. fee. And they came to us and they wanted us to like help pay for it. I'm like, yeah, no, sorry, pay it for you. Yep. But it was a pleasant surprise. Yep. So anytime anything, you're absolutely right. Any time there is a fee or even a special assessment, there is language in that community association disclosure that says, if it's not disclosed here, it is the seller's responsibility to pay it. Okay, so you want to make sure that your client is doing their due diligence of, of asking their questions. Tom, I think your question was next. I was going to say, I, I learned the hard way, um, getting back to the commission, the numbers will be, you, you know, make sure they're right, but also look at the check, and especially if the office is holding earnest money, it's going to be different than... Very true. Paper and I, I brought it up and I was wrong because I forgot we, you know, the earnest money was held. Yeah, if the earnest money is being held, you may see an amount different than the total 3% commission that it's supposed to be because we're already holding the earnest money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. With, um, with HOA stuff, I've seen transfer fee as well. 
Wow, is that different than the initiation? Or is that just the same? There's a transfer tax. Yeah. Well, not, uh, I know that one on the, on the seller side. Uh -huh. But I've also seen it like an a HOA transfer fee. Is that probably just someone saying that instead of initiation? Um, that could be, that's a good question. It could be uh, the same as an initiation. It could also be sometimes they charge for a, uh, a clearance letter. Seen, yeah. And that could, that's more than likely going to be on the seller side of the, the transaction because they, I mean, these community associations, they charge, you sneeze wrong, but they're going to charge you. So, all right. Okay, that was short and sweet. Uh, appreciate your attendance here. I apologize for the visual, uh, lack of visuals, but uh, uh, if you, anybody's got any questions or you wanna see some examples, happy to show them to you. All right, thanks everybody, have a great day.